This is a picture of Ptolemy, and that's spelled P-T-O-L-E-M-Y. The P is silent. It's pronounced Ptolemy. He was an Alexandrian astronomer from around A.D. 150. Alexandria is a city in the northern part of Egypt, a very far north part of Egypt, on the Nile Delta. And it was the part of Egypt that was under Roman rule at the time. And he was the person who put forth the idea of a, of a geocentric theory. And it's sometimes called a geocentric system or a Ptolemaic system, named after Ptolemy. Now, this wasn't actually his idea originally. When he was claiming that the sun was at the, that the earth, excuse me, the earth was at the center of the solar system, he was actually repeating ideas of earlier thinkers. Aristotle, for example, hundreds of years before that, had put forth the idea that the earth is at the center. Ptolemy is famous for working out the mathematical details. Here's a diagram that shows uh, the, the solar system as Ptolemy might have envisioned it. Uh, drawn like this, we would call this the Ptolemaic system. or sometimes called the geocentric system. Those terms, Ptolemaic system and geocentric system, are basically, basically synonyms. Geocentric simply means Earth at the center. And the Ptolemaic system refers to the Earth-centered system as worked out by Ptolemy. And Ptolemy described the particular details of this system, how long it would take each planet to orbit, and, um, and um, how far apart they were and how fast they were going and actually uh, other details uh, the planets according to Ptolemy would would move around on the orbit and then they would at the same time spin around on this smaller orbit that was that was orbiting along with the main orbit and those smaller orbits were called epicycles and it was necessary to add those in to the Ptolemaic system to make the, the motions of the planet in his planets in his system actually match the motions of the planets in the night sky. And the Ptolemaic system grew very, very complicated over time as people kept adding little details here and there to precisely make this model match the motions of the planets in the sky. Now, even though the Ptolemaic system is not correct, we don't believe that the Earth is really there at the center. We believe the Sun is at the center. So even though it was not correct in that sense, it was accurate in that it could accurately predict where the planets would be on a given night. If you wanted to know where Mars would appear in the sky on such and such a day at such and such, and such a time, for example, the Ptolemaic system would predict that very, very accurately. And not just for Mars, but for other planets as well. And in other words, the Ptolemaic system worked it had predictive ability. And because it worked, it persisted a long time. This was the, the dominant understanding of the solar system all the way up into the 1500s and 1600s, up until the time of Copernicus and Galileo. The Ptolemaic system was, of course, though, uh, fatally flawed in that it didn't match reality. The Earth isn't at the center. And with further observations that they were able to make with, um, with telescopes in the 1500s and 1600s, they were able to see some things about the, the planets that Ptolemy had not envisioned and that couldn't be accounted for in the Ptolemaic system. And Galileo was one of the people responsible for beginning to break down the, the hold that the Ptolemaic system had on people's minds. When people were trying to understand the world, they weren't able to get it right because they believed this fundamentally incorrect view of the universe. And Galileo began to break that apart and open the way for a correct understanding of this universe that we live in. We'll talk about Galileo next.